I'm James Johnson, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the JSON toolkit and uh, exporting data using MQTT as published points. We'll probably break this video into several parts uh, just to keep the video short and concise. And uh, there are some training videos available on the Tritium University on using the JSON toolkit. I'd suggest taking a look at those as well. Uh, I'll make some assumptions that you viewed those other videos or are somewhat familiar with the JSON toolkit and uh, get into some details about specifics about the toolkit. And for the purposes of uh, this demonstration, I'll be using this JACE controller uh, here, which is uh, building one floor one JACE. And it has a BACnet network underneath it. Uh, with a number of BACnet devices for that floor. So under uh, drivers and BACnet network here, uh, we have a floor one folder, and underneath that there's a number of air handler devices which are similar. And we might want to use the JSON toolkit to collect data about all these air handler devices to then publish that data via some mechanism, whether that's MQTT, or just HTTP or OBIX or some other mechanism, but the JSON toolkit allows us to gather some of that data. So uh, the first uh, that I want to take a look at is the wire sheet, and we'll look at using a, a JSON schema component here from the JSON toolkit. And I've already added uh, this um, JSON schema to the station here. And I've configured a few things. Just uh, I'll talk through the basics here. Again, I'm not going to go through all the details. Look at the training videos under the Tritium University site. But I have this uh, JSON schema component, and I've gone ahead and set up uh, a few properties here, just mainly to display the name of the station, the current time, and the message ID. And so the idea is that when I generate this each time, this is going to uh, take the objects here that's from the schema, and it'll generate the JSON payload. Uh, each time I click this, uh, we should see that the message ID updates, and so now it went from 33 to 34, and the current time updates. So this is just some basic construct of the message, but I want to actually include real-time point data maybe from the error handlers. So the way that we would go about doing that, one option anyway, is to use this queries uh, component of the JSON schema. And in the JSON toolkit, there's a query subfolder here, and we can click and drag out a query uh, from the palette. And maybe I'll just call this all uh, AHU data or something along those lines. And really, you can use your imagination here as far as setting up a query. It could be uh, an equal query or B equal query, combination thereof. In this case, maybe I'll limit the scope of the BQL query to the BACnet network and then look for um, control points. And we can use uh, whatever sort of predicate that we want to here. Uh, maybe I'll keep this somewhat simple and just say, uh, you know, proxy extension um, device. So there's a get proxy extension, get device method, uh, and then get the display name. And we can check for that being like a to something. So that'll find all the driver um, proxy points under the BACnet network. Um, that are under air handler devices, or devices at least whose names start with AHU something. And then uh, we can specify a projection of what we want to see. Uh, maybe something like proxyxt.device.display name as AHU, uh, display name, which will be the display name of the point as a point. Uh, we could do value with facets as value, and then maybe status as uh, status. So it's just, you know, any kind of BQL query that's going to find some data. And uh, I can click the play button next to the ORD field editor, right? And that should um, process that BQL query, and I can see um, whether those are the results that I'm you know, wanting to get to then process and put into the JSON payload. So if I'm happy with the results of my uh, BQL query, then uh, we can embed the, those results into the JSON payload. And the way that you can do that is simply using a bound query result here from the palette. So we're going to drag that out and drop it onto our um, JSON schema object here where we're building up that schema. 
and I'll pick um, from any available queries that are set up under the component. In this case, there's just one uh, one type of uh, or one query to select from. And then you can also um, select different um, output styles depending on uh, how you want that JSON included into um, the information. Now you can see the, the last time this well it hasn't really executed yet. Um, it is set up to execute on a, a frequency every 10 minutes so um, this will update but I can go ahead and force it um, by executing the queries and you can see that it found 285 control points then using that BQL query and uh, we can click generate which it'll you know generate on the interval as well on its own uh, it does subscribe to those results and everything as well and you can see now that there is um, air handler data being included in the JSON payload uh, and uh, it has a uh, air handler one here as the piece of equipment and then uh, the point name and then uh, the value and also uh, the status for that particular point and it'll go through and include all the data um, for all the air handler units so if i scroll down far enough we should get to air handler two and that sort of thing uh, now if i want to export this data to something I would be linking that out slot then from the, the schema here, right? So I have this output slot here, which is a string, and I want to uh, maybe link mark this. And then we can go to our uh, MQTT driver, and I have this configured uh, just to use a, a connection to the online HiveMQ.com broker with a anonymous authentication. It's just for testing. Uh, but obviously, if this was a real production um, environment, then I'd want to have authentication set up and, and everything. And the idea here is that um, we can publish um, the a point uh, using a string publish point here. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, we can set up a topic like uh, building one, uh, floor one. AHU data or something like that will be uh, the topic and uh, we can link from the uh, JSON schema component take the output and link that into the N16 slot here and when you look at these uh, JSON schema um, or I'm sorry the MQTT proxy points and we look at the proxy extension there's a few properties that you might want to consider um, editing. There's um, publish on change, which defaults to true and this retain property as well. Uh, and then there's a QoS here uh, as well, which is the uh, by default is set at fire and forget, which means the the publisher is just going to send the message and assume it gets to where it's supposed to get to. Uh, there are two other options on the QoS at least once is a little bit more reliable in that the publisher sends the message and expects a response back from uh, whoever received it, the broker in this case. Uh, and that guarantees that I know at least it's delivered at, one, at least once to the broker. And that might be a little bit better um, uh, QoS level for this uh, configuration as well. So we have this uh, building one, floor one, AHU data topic uh, that we should be uh, publishing to and in this case, I'm using um, just a MQTT lens um, broker or client rather that's connected to the same broker. And I could subscribe to uh, a topic there, which would be the BLDG uh, one floor one slash AHU data and uh, subscribe to that topic. And uh, you can see here that then the client uh, receives the message from the broker. So the station published the topic to the HiveMQ broker and any other clients that connect to it uh, should be able to retrieve that message asking for it. And uh, if I was only set on a fire and forget, then the client would have to wait until the next time that I published an update on the message. But because I set it to at least once, then as soon as a client connects and asks for it, then the broker responds with that message because the QoS level is at one. Uh, and then I also set it to retain, which means the broker will keep a copy of that message. All right. So that's just a real quick example of 
using a JSON schema to send uh, all the AHU point data from the BACnet network as a single string published message from the station to a broker and a client able to subscribe and get that uh, JSON payload from the broker. So stay tuned uh, to the subsequent videos. We'll go through uh, some other examples of how to publish this data in different uh, more granular fashion, maybe per device uh, or using a relative JSON schema as well. So thanks for watching the video and stay tuned for more.